Hey guys, welcome to another news breakdown here on Soto Pop. Soto! Alright, as always, I'm your host, The Frozen Stratos, and strap in, this is gonna be kind of a long one, because we have a lot of news spanning a lot of different toy lines. Um, first of which is some really cool stuff that came out last week about Shoto Super's um, GoGo 5 set, and we didn't really get any, like, new figures or new information or any of that, but what we did get were updates to the mold that they wanted to tell us about since they are closer to, um, you know, actual full-on production. Uh, so what are these changes? Well, first let's take a look at the figures themselves side by side with what we saw before. Um, biggest changes so far, uh, it seems to be like the shade of the color, but you know, that's technically unconfirmed I guess because like that test shot does look a little bit darker but it could be the lighting um you also have uh various back peg changes you have uh the cutout in the neck which is which is different than what we saw before and we'll get to in a bit um another thing to note with the female figure you do get uh the back peg as well and a covered up neck piece now um, so that is what I believe is what's going to be going forward for all the figures. They just had the pink one ready, I guess. Um, and they are, I believe they're going to be painted. That's the impression I got from uh, the blog itself. Um, so let's, you know, sort of dive deep into the, the nitty and gritty into what these guys do. Um, so yeah, like I said, the back peg, that is 3 mil compatible, so it'll work with all your Shoto, or no, your Shokugan bases, uh, so that's all well and good. Um, so about the neck piece, uh, the, the gap in the neck did exist in the prototypes, and they do exist in the Shoto Super release for Sun Vulcan. Now, those were luckily covered up by scarves, so they didn't feel the need to fill that in. Uh, the difference here is, uh, well, they didn't really want to leave a gap. And on top of that, they told us why there's a gap. And not why they filled it, but, you know, they filled it for us, so that's nice. But why is there this gap? Um, they gave us this neat little engineering diagram. Well, not engineering diagram, but like a diagram showing the engineering process. Um, and I, I really liked it. I liked it a lot. So I went ahead and translated uh, the whole thing. And that is available on um, the news links in the description down below. But basically what it comes down to is that when you're molding a piece, the reason why you don't just straight up cast like a whole thing in dense plastic is because if you, you know, take a look at the diagram, uh, bottom right-ish or middle right, uh, you'll see that the center part takes longer uh, for it to cool. So when it cools down after the outside, it compresses the piece and it it causes like this sinking thing um, and it breaks the part uh, so it it all has something to do with cooling because uh, when it cools it does shrink a little bit and that's basically why we don't get fully molded pieces of plastic uh, just in general at all so if you're interested in toy engineering or toy designing at all which I am uh, this is really cool information to have um, so yeah that was really awesome there are more updates though uh, they did let us know that there is the drop crotch system here, uh, so you can get more poses out of the legs. Um, there's also a slight difference in the female mold's hands. Um, and actually, we'll see sort of like a visual representation as to why toward the end of this blog, or not this one, but this video. Um, it, the hands are smaller by a few millimeters, but they really wanted to dial in um, those proportions correctly and you know like I said we do have completely different molds and I gotta assume these hands look way more general um, than I'd say you know like standard like posing hands like specific to these characters so we might be seeing these show up more and more in uh, different releases of Shoto Super so that's probably why they were you know more adamant about putting this brand new mold into production and how they might be able to recoup some of those costs, maybe even have these go at a loss or at least like, you know, 
not as much, not get as much money out of these just so they could get this mold in and reuse it in perpetuity. So I like that. That's really cool stuff. Um, another thing that wasn't too helpful was that they really wanted to show off the size of the the bird, and it. I mean, they showed it off in someone's hand and in the hands of these characters, but genuinely, I cannot tell the scale or I know it's in scale with these guys but I can't tell the sheer size of it it looks big but in someone's hands whose hands I have no scale of this isn't really all that helpful but I if it's helpful to you more power to you um so yeah that's it for Shoto Super just some really quick updates of what we're actually going to be getting once these are in hand so I'm very excited to see all these things come to fruition uh but that's not it, because we have a brand new, um, well, I guess not brand new anymore, it's been a few days, but a whole bunch of stuff coming out of the Common Rider Candy Toy blog. Uh, and there are some really exciting things here, but first, let's talk about Zero Two. Uh, so this guy, I don't know, it, it surprised me that there were two figures that they talked about this week. Um, especially with Zero Two, since he hasn't debuted yet, but... We're here now, and it's cool. Uh, what are the things to note about this? Well, um, he comes with both the swords. Now, this is a new version of the uh, the briefcase sword uh, that has a peg in the back so that you can, you know, dual wield it like this and have it look like it's combined in the show. Um, there's something different to that mold, though. It, it, it isn't just a peg. They did lengthen it a bit. They didn't make it larger in proportion. Though what that does um, is it kind of makes the uh, initial like lime sword look very, very small, especially when you compare it to in-show versions of the sword. Um, I, I sort of did my best to like show the scale of this. Hopefully I scaled the, the image properly, but that sword does need to be a bit bigger now. So that one didn't get any bigger, so I don't know why. Ah, whatever, man. This is interesting. Um, I, <laughs> uh, I'm excited to, I don't know, I, I really hope they give us a different version of that Lime Sword. Um, but hey, I, I don't know. This, it's nice that we have this now. Um, cool. Let's move on. Um, hey, let's talk about PVC, because there is PVC on this guy. I don't know what color the PVC plastic they used is. I want to assume it's white just because of what we'll see later, but something tells me it might be like a silvery. I'm not 100% sure. Point is, there is um, PVC on the face and on that little, like, scarf area. Uh, and that's so, you know, toy safety standards, those need to be soft so they don't break off and kill some kid. Also, that uh, means that these things are going to be fully painted. We get a fully painted face, not a lot of stickers here. And in general, I'm not seeing a lot of stickers. Um, let's talk about... Oh, yeah. Also, um, they they made it so that the chest piece and that little leaflet thing is separate. So that, you know, you can have the two different AVS and PVC. Um, they also fixed up the silhouette here. So, they told us in the blog that there is a, um, a structural reason... As to why they made the arm so far away from the shoulder or the shoulder so far away from the chest initially but for whatever reason they were able to fix it they said it was too complex to get into but come on man I, I really want to know it doesn't matter put it in the vlog I want I want to know um, so yeah this is cool this is really cool it like it, it's it's again with Soto doing something, fixing something that I didn't know needed to be fixed. Um, and it's it's very well smoothed, smoothed out. Um, so yeah, cool stuff. Uh, let's talk about plastics again. Uh, because we technically have four different plastics. If, you know, you want to count different colored plastics as different plastics, we've got the yellow ABS, black ABS, red ABS for the hands, because uh, those are different, and then the PVC that we saw earlier. So they're doing their best, and I guess they're pouring a lot of their budget into this figure, um, so that they could get the more accurate look out of him, just like they did with Zero One. 
and this is his final form so you know pulling out all the stops another thing to get this thing right is that they have a lot more paint on it um so the black is all picked out the silver is all picked out and the red is all picked out on the pvc because obviously you need to paint the whole pvc thing like there's a lot that you don't have to do because they painted most of it like the silver to me really you know stands out uh as well as the black just because they paint match black really well with the black plastic um so yeah that's always cool stuff uh another note about the paint though is that they use two different metallic reds um on the eyes and the the antenna they wanted to do that just to make sure that you knew there was a distinction between uh the antenna and the eyes because it could you know inadvertently sort of blend into each other so that's very much appreciated i love that um but yeah that's actually it for zero two really neat stuff absolutely love it uh let's move on to Tsukiyomi. yep we've been waiting uh i i believe josh told me it was like 10 months since the uh the cat images of this like the the fuzzy cat images we got of this and now she's finally come to fruition um, this is also the point where I note about the hands uh, and why, you know, sizing them down uh, sort of matters. And I guess I'll just say this here now uh, and get it out of the way. Uh, her hands uh, are what I guess the, um, the Candy Toy Discord, what we've been talking about, it seems like these are Sogo's hands. Uh, and they do look kind of huge on her, and you'll see that in the coming images, if you don't already. Um, but this figure, outside of that, this figure is incredible. Uh, the first thing they wanted to note is that she comes with the Fize phone gun, or the phone, Fize, it's the phone gun. Um, she used it in the show as her main weapon, and, uh, G-Man notes that, hey, uh, I recognize that uh, you might be thinking that she never used this in the show when she was transformed, but he went to the stage show and she had this weapon in her hand. He looked over there with binoculars. She had this in hand uh, on the stage show. So they gave it to her. Um, and I was really hoping they would either like whether or not there's any basis for it. It is to me her main weapon, um, but that's not the only weapon she comes with. Because apparently, she has this. This is um, that blade that she used uh, toward the end of the series to, you know, actually, that would be would have been a spoiler. I'm not going to go into it. But uh, this is zero. I almost said zero two. Uh, this is Sugiyomi's blade, um, and it looks fantastic. Now, this is something that the blog pointed out was something that a lot of the fans were looking forward to, or not looking forward to, but had requested. Um, and a lot of the people in the comments, or not in the comments, in the in the uh, surveys, said, "Hey, yeah, give her the beam saber, or you know, something of the like." It's not actually called a beam saber, it's called a luminous fractor. And he wanted to go out there and say, hey, get it right guys, he's the biggest nerd in town, he knows you're saying it wrong. So this is the luminous fractor. Everyone say it with me now, luminous fractor. There we go. Um, so basically, this is a separate hand, uh, and it really looks molded well into it. This is made out of PVC, um, and you know, we'll see why in a second. but. Also because you don't want to end up snapping this since it's such a long piece. Uh, so that's really nice. Um, so what I was talking about in terms of PVC, the cape. Uh, the cape takes up a lot of the PVC budget. And what we learned from the O's figures is that they had to choose one color of PVC to use across the entire wave of Combo Change O's too. Um, and I do wonder if that's the case here, or if Tsukiyomi just took up so much PVC that she has her own little cutout, uh, like her own little steel mold for PVC, separate from Zero One. I don't know, this is why I'm thinking, uh, or not Zero One, Zero Two. This is why I'm thinking Zero Two's PVC is white PVC, but I'm not 100% sure, just from the evidence we had so far with the O stuff that's that's speculation and i guess it doesn't really matter i'm the only one that cares um so she takes up a lot of pvc 
uh, and it's probably why she's in the set she's in, um, as well as some other items. She is in set 09. Um, the other thing is uh, they basically had to completely redo the body, or at least like the torso area, because like they were saying um, typically what they do is have a front plate and a back plate for the armor. Uh, but this time, if they did the back plate, it would look too big. If they thinned out the back plate and stuck it on, then the plastic would be too thin. Wait, hold on. Let me try that again. Uh, if if the if they used a uh, if they used the back plate, the standard back plate they always use, um, that would be too thick, and then it would be. Uh, if they tried to thin it out, it would be too thin and the plastic would be brittle. What they did here was they ditched the entire thing anyway and just put some pegs on it and now you can stick uh, the cape in there anyway. They did say that um, due to the way that the cape is formed, um, it probably wouldn't have inhibited motion too much. Uh, had it been ABS, but they still wanted to go with PVC anyway. Uh, the shoulder uh, is very different. It's very much like what we saw with Hirobi and Jin with the uh, ball joint rather than this, you know, pegged swivel, uh, the swivel hinges. So this is a very new and different mold. I'm excited to see what it's like in hand. Um, but yeah, uh, that's it for this. Uh, they gave us the full wave layout and we start to see Possibly why this layout is so, I don't know, uneven. Because we had Zero Two and we have Tsukiyomi, who we see take up a lot of different plastics, a lot of different PVC, and then we see what they're doing to save on cost. The We have a Magir in here and we have a uh, Gen 1 Humagir. Gen 1 Humagir is a complete remold or not complete remold, it's just a slight remold of something we already have, right? And they were able to save money there. Same with the um, uh, the Grasshopper, I think, Magir. Um, basically, the first one that came out, you're getting that same thing, except without a head and without shoulder pads. Well, I guess, yeah, and without shoulder pads. It comes in in a completely separate box. So I'm thinking they were able to cut costs with those um, and then just distribute it to Zero Two and Tsukiyomi. Um, it is speculated, at least from my end, that there are three more pieces to this box. So keep in mind, this is not done. This isn't it for Zero Nine. I don't know what's going to be in there. I do wonder if they are more sort of cost cutting measure items. Hopefully it's more army buildable items. Uh, and stuff to reuse maybe the Magir again, uh, maybe the Humagir again. I don't know. Who knows? I'm excited to see what they do, but most signs are pointing to um, uh, the main bad guy. Forgot his name already. Arc Zero. Most signs are pointing to him and then possibly an accessory set. That's, that's my guess. Um, but yeah, that's it for AI-09 so far. Um, and yeah, after that, there... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is still more news. We have more Shoto news, but not the Shoto news you expect. Uh, unless you saw the thumbnail, in which case you definitely did expect it. It's Shoto Digimon. I know there is at least one person who is very excited for this, um, but let's take a look at these guys. Now, I, I fully admit I don't know too much about Digimon. Uh, I know that this dude's name is War Greymon, um, and he he's got a lot of paint on him, so that's really cool. Uh, these are, each of these are going to be priced higher than normal. Um, next up we have Angel Woman, is what the Digimon wiki had told me. Uh, and this is technically our second female Shoto mold ever in existence, I think, possibly. Someone please fact check me. I think this is the second one that we've seen so far. The only other one is Gogo -Go Pink, or Gogo -Go 5 Pink, I don't know what her name is. Um, next up is Garudamon, I believe. And he looks cool. I love the look of this guy. I dig it. Um, so yeah, these guys are all cool. These are the only three they showed off, but they also teased three more that I don't know the name of. Please get at me in the comments down below. 
I have no idea what these are. Um, so the thing is with these two, there are, or these three, there are two ways to possibly get it. Um, the first way is from Premium Bandai, uh, you get an extra three Shokugan bases, and the box art is going to be done by one of the designers on Digimon. Uh, so if that matters to you, this is all going to retail for $50 at Premium Bandai, but then you have to consider um, middleman fees, shipping uh, it from Bandai to your middleman, and then your middleman to you. So that's going to cost extra. Or you can just go the retail route uh, that we've seen. And this was uncovered and discovered by uh, Rai uh, Shuki. Who let me know that there is a box of these. A box of six of these. Um, and currently on, on AmiAmi it's like $50 right now. So basically the same price except without all the middleman fees involved. Uh, so, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not gonna tell you what to do, but if I were buying these, I'd go with this. There's really no point, uh, in getting the premium set, though, um, they did give us the same images between the premium set and the retail set. It doesn't look like there are any paint differences, but all that could change. Uh, I believe these come out, uh, during the fall, so a lot can change in production, so I don't know. Uh, I'm not 100% sure. But, with that said, that brings this episode to a close, and man, that was a long one. But I'm glad you stuck around. Thanks for doing that. Hey, also, there are links in the description down below to how you can help the Black Lives Matter movement. You can sign petitions. You can donate money. Anything your heart desires. Please, please, please check out those links. There are some, uh, some places that still aren't fully funded. Uh, so if you can't donate, please share those around. Um... And yeah, guys, thanks for watching. Keep it juicy. I will have you know, I did all of that in one take. I did not do a second one. I am very happy. <laughs>